Well, as Tesla continues to roll out full self-driving beta to more and more users, right now it's more critical than ever that you get your score as high as possible, as quickly as possible. And that's why today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to get a perfect 100 score or at least a 99, which will be more relevant come this Friday. There's a couple of different things that you can do to get your score up. And I also wanna share with you kind of a hack on how to get a perfect score with the least amount of effort. So make sure you stick around to the end so you can find out more about this trick on how to get your safety score all the way up to 100 with very little work. So first I wanna start by talking through this in the legitimate way of how to get your score up to 100 or even 99. Come this Friday, Full Self Driving Beta is going to be releasing version 10.3 and along with it, they are planning on opening up full self-driving beta to those with a 99 score. So for the first time come this Friday, a 99 score will now be allowed to have access to full self-driving beta. Now before you go through with this and you do gain access to full self-driving beta, I think it's really important to share full self-driving beta is beta for a reason. It is not perfect, it's not very good in some situations, and has a lot of work to do. As new versions roll out, it does seem to be improving, which is very good. I'm very excited to see 10.3, and to see if some of the areas where I had a lot of trouble are a lot better with 10.3. Of course, over time, this will continue to get better, and as they expand full self-driving beta out, there's more data to use to help drive the system. So the more users that do opt into the full self-driving beta program, the more drivers there are, the more data that's being pulled, and the quicker this will ultimately become wide release. I did want to mention all of that because if you do get full self-driving beta, I want you to have realistic expectations. First and foremost, you are going to have to pay attention during the driving of the car. The system is not perfect, and depending on your area, it may be better or worse than others. Why that's important is because it's not a very smooth ride you're about to go on. Full self-driving beta is very jerky. It can accelerate unexpectedly. It can also come to a stop unexpectedly as well. So it's very jerky, it does take hard turns, and it can make you a little bit nauseous, at least in my case. There are some situations where I just don't have it in me to ride with full self-driving beta, so sometimes I do take over and just drive myself. In addition, I do not drive with full self-driving beta with the family in the car, because it'll make them nauseous as well. So I did want to mention that because I don't want you to think this is like autopilot, where you can just get in the car, put it in autopilot, and go you're not gonna have such a seamless experience with full self-driving beta. Now, on to the good stuff. So, based on your score today, you can start to understand where you need to improve your score. The safety score beta that Tesla did roll out has several categories that it's rating your driving in. Ultimately, Tesla is planning to use this for their insurance rates, which is really kind of an interesting idea. But let's cover those really quick. First is forward collision warning. So if somebody pulls out in front of you or you're coming up on somebody and not paying attention and the car alerts that you're going to make an impact, then it's going to kick off an alert and that is very hard to overcome. Just one incident in a thousand miles will impact your score. Hard braking is another category and with hard braking, it's very much about how hard this car is coming to a stop. It's based on G-forces, but here's the thing that I've noticed. As long as you let off the accelerator and let the car come to a stop all on its own, regardless of how hard it is, I have not been hit on this. The only times I've gotten a ding on hard braking is when I physically touch the brake pedal. For aggressive turning, again, it's using G-forces of how hard the car is turning. So make sure when you're doing turns that you're going at a very slow pace. It's gonna be annoying to the people around you, but that'll keep that score down as well. Next is unsafe following, and this one is probably the hardest one to not get hit for. It is going to use distance between you and the car in front of you, but it seems to vary quite a bit. And I believe it's because I have a vision only system car and it's not being able to tell exactly what that distance is quite at the same level in every situation. So it's very hard to get by without having following distance and fractions. 
And then finally, the last category, force autopilot disengagements. So don't put your car in autopilot and then get out of the driver's seat and sit in the passenger and take a nap. It's a major no-no that will absolutely wreck your safety score. All right, so those are the categories and I had a perfect 100 until somebody pulled out in front of me and I had been at a 98 and a 99 for the longest time and I set off to get to a 100 score by the first Friday they released this to everybody. Unfortunately, the system went down two hours before I hit 100 and we believe that's when they pulled all the 100 scores at that point in time, so I just missed it. However, I did get 100 that day, so it wasn't that long after that finally full self-driving beta was rolled out to me. On top of that, on Twitter, I've seen numerous people get a 100 score and within 24 hours sometimes, they're getting full self-driving beta released to their car, which is pretty awesome. So there is incentive at this point to get to 100 or get to 99 by Friday because it seems like they're starting to roll this out more frequently than when they first started. So the first tool I recommend you check out is safety.sfnet.app. What this interface does is it allows you to log each of your trips. So each trip you're gonna put in your miles and the score that you achieved for those miles. And what it's gonna tell you is exactly how many miles you need to go to get to 100. This worked flawlessly for me and it was to the mile. So this app I highly recommend. It's just on your web browser. You don't have to download anything, but it worked perfect for me. Now what you're gonna find is some of you are gonna have thousands of miles you'd have to drive with 100 scores to be able to get to that. So here's a tip for you. As you're going on drives, if you get home and you had one hit and it brought your score to 98, you're gonna to wanna to keep driving that day until your daily score goes up to 100. You can also use the same website to check on a daily score. So you can just put the day's trip in there and it'll tell you how many miles for that day to get to 100. You want every single day to be 100. So even if you have a bad day, just keep driving and get it to 100. Hot tip for you, it does not matter, regardless of what people are gonna say, and there's gonna be comments in the bottom that disagree with me, get on the highway, put the car on autopilot, and log miles. No matter how hard the car brakes or how hard the car turns, how close it is to other cars, it does not give you infractions while you're on autopilot on the highway. So you don't get dinged for how the car drives itself. So get on the highway, log some miles. That is the best way to get your score perfect for any given day. So regardless of the miles that you need to do, that is how you need to do it. You need to get on the highway, put it in autopilot, and just drive. Get as many miles as you can until you get your score up to 99 or 100. Now, as I promised at the beginning of this video, there is kind of a hack or a cheat you can enable to be able to get a 100 safety score much, much faster. Although I am not endorsing this method, I have seen quite a people successfully do this, so I'm just sharing with you what others have found. Here's what you're gonna do. If you have a very bad score and you're gonna need thousands upon thousands of miles to get your score up to where it needs to be, it's going to be very hard to get there and it's gonna take a lot of time. So if you wanna get there faster, here's what you need to do. Go into your car and open up the full self-driving beta enrollment. What you're gonna do is unenroll your vehicle to full self-driving beta. And it's gonna give you a warning and let you know that it's going to lose all the data it has to date. And that's what you want. Now you're gonna to have to wait overnight, possibly even up to 24 hours before you re-enroll into full self-driving beta. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna then start looking at your data again and everything that was there before will be erased. Now here's the thing, if you do this too quickly, it's gonna keep your old data. So you can't just go into your car, unenroll from full self-driving beta, and then re-enroll at the same time. It's gonna keep your old data. You basically need the car to go to sleep for a long period of time, and then when you re-enroll, it's not gonna have any data left. So it's gonna start from zero. So all you have to do once you re-enroll, go drive 100 miles on the highway in autopilot, come right back home and park it. Wait for full self-driving to show up in your email to let you know it's coming to your car. Again, I am not saying that I endorse you doing it, and that's kind of cheating, but that is a way to do it if you are so far past where you could possibly recover your score. So with all of that, these are the ways that you can get full self-driving beta as quickly as possible if you so want it. You may think you want it, and once you get it, a lot of you are not gonna like having it because it's still in development, and it's not a smooth ride, and it doesn't drive itself everywhere. 
Some people have had a lot of success with no interactions, letting the car drive itself all the way to its destination. I have yet to have one where I had less than five or 10 interactions where I had to take over. So based on your area and how much full self-driving beta has been done in your driving situations will definitely impact how good the system is in your area. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.